Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Also on iTunes. The podcast is there. One word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, for those of you who watch the economy, you might believe like I do that we're in a liquidity bubble, a housing bubble, and a stock bubble. Understand, bubbles happen in life. Right now, in boxing, I believe we're in a Janady Golovkin bubble. Look, I've admired Golovkin here online for quite some time. I believe for longtime subscribers, if they uh, do a YouTube search, they'll stumble upon an old video I did where I talked about the bright futures for Janady Golovkin and Tyson Fury. By the way, both of those guys remain unbeaten. But I believe the casinos, I believe the market, we say the casinos, but it's really the market, has mispriced this fight. Janady Golovkin should not be a greater than 16 to 1 favorite to win this fight. Right? I should not be able to get plus 750 odds on Daniel Gill simply to win this fight. In my opinion, Daniel Gill is the most meaningful opponent Janady Golovkin will have ever faced as a professional. Right? In my opinion, Janady Golovkin is a patient stalker who needs to try to cut off the ring on you. Daniel Gill, by contrast, is what I call a hoverer, right? Not an ambush fighter. Rather, he's always right by where you are. He's always an arm's length away. I don't think Janady Golovkin is prepared for this style, nor do I believe that Janady Golovkin has fought the same level of competition as Daniel Gill. Right? Janady Golovkin has fought people like Ashida. Right? Kasim Uma. Uh, Simon. Matthew Macklin. These are the big fights in Golovkin's professional career. Right? Understand by contrast, Daniel Gill has fought future Boxing Hall of Famer, in my opinion, Anthony Mundine, twice. I would argue the first fight is the only legitimate loss on Daniel Gill's record and that was a razor close loss. He's also fought and beaten another future Boxing Hall of Famer in my opinion, Felix Sturm, who, let's face it, we all know beat Oscar De La Hoya back in the day, right? Oscar's fight right before he fights Bernard Hopkins. I hope everyone gives that fight a look. Obviously Sturm has held a middleweight title at different times, right? I know Sturm has a problem with movement, right? You saw that even after Sturm fought Daniel Gill. Just understand Daniel Gill is the one who created the blueprint on how to beat Sturm using movement, right? Daniel Gill has also fought Roman Karmazin. Now I know Karmazin has since retired from the sport. But people need to realize that Karmazin was a handful in his prime. And, of course, Daniel Gill has fought Darren Barker. Let me make a point on the Barker fight. Barker goes down off of a body shot. Barely makes it out of the round. Understand, Daniel Gill is a devastating body puncher. Right? While he's hovering. He comes in and he will go to the body. Right? When is the last time you saw Janady Golovkin ever have to deal with any kind of discomfort to his body? So let me ask the obvious question. If none of us have seen Janady Golovkin ever really have to fight off his back foot, and if none of us 
has ever has ever seen Janady Golovkin really have to deal with hardcore body shots. And given that Daniel Gill is still in his prime at 33, how are these odds even possible? How are they even plausible? Understand, Golovkin has never had to fight as a professional in the 11th or 12th rounds. Never. The last time he had to go 10 rounds, actually start the 10th round, was three years ago in 2011. Right? Doesn't this fight really come down to whether or not Janady Golovkin can severely hurt or slow down Daniel Gill in the first half of the fight? Because if he doesn't, if you don't see Gill hit the canvas or look woozy or get rocked by shots, if Daniel Gill is still lucid, still conscious, and still relatively untouched at the start of the seventh round, isn't Gill going to dominate the second half of this fight? The bet I like is Daniel Gill to win the fight at a plus 750, hedged with Janady Golovkin by KO at a minus 333. The gap between the two numbers makes the hedge possible. Understand how preposterous a plus 750 is. If I bet $20, and if I win, right, if Daniel Gill, a guy who held the belt not so long ago, who has faced more meaningful competition, if Daniel Gill wins this fight, then off a $20 bet, the casino would give me back my 20 and then I would get $150 in profit. Think about that. Let's also talk about Janady Golovkin, if my cat allows me. Right? Understand, Janady Golovkin doesn't have the hand speed advantage here. In my opinion, he's going to have a problem with Gill's lateral movement. Also, I know the folklore that has developed is that it's impossible to go the distance with Janady Golovkin. But even a cursory review of his background shows us that that's not right. Right? Mehdi Buala went the distance in an eight-round fight professionally against Janady Golovkin. Ian Gardner went the distance in an eight-round fight as a professional against Janady Golovkin. Right now, many of you are scratching your head saying, who? That's exactly the point. Other guys have done it. Take a look at the Kasim Uma fight. Kasim Uma isn't trying to survive until the 10th round. He's actually roughing up Janady Golovkin in the early part of that fight. Now, no one's going to confuse the high-volume Kasim Uma with a hoverer like Daniel Gill. Gill has much more movement than someone like um, a Kasim Uma. But understand the movement, the lateral movement, makes it much more likely that Daniel Gill go several rounds. Right? Understand there's a part to Golovkin's game where Golovkin just stands there and tries to measure you, tries to slowly walk you down, slowly walk you down before he opens up on you, right? What happens if he's attacked while he's trying to do that, right? What happens if he finds himself in against a guy who isn't that far away from him? who doesn't plan to run for the early rounds, but who actually plans to win the early rounds. Aren't the early rounds the rounds that Golovkin lost against Kasim Uma? Right? Also, Golovkin, there's a price to be paid when you're a big puncher like Golovkin. Right? You tend to be flat Footed, more flat-footed than your opponent, right? 
To get the leverage, you need to have your feet planted. Right? To be able to hit the target, you need to be able to have your foot planted and have leverage and have the angle. Movement disrupts that. Exactly the kind of game that Daniel Gill is bringing to the table where he's going to be moving laterally, hovering around Golovkin. That's exactly the kind of game that can neutralize Golovkin's power. I thought Matthew Macklin made a mistake by going back, giving Golovkin an opportunity to pursue him and to cut off the ring. I think Giel, instead of going back, is going to go sideways. And as he goes sideways, he's going to be throwing punches. I'm expecting him to have the higher punch output, the faster hand speed, the greater lateral movement than Janady Golovkin. In the sport of boxing, all of that matters. Let me point out, The casino, the market, has priced this as a mismatch, right? Golovkin's favorite to such a point where, according to the casino, if they fought 16 times, Golov uh, 17 times, Golovkin would win 16 of the 17. I view the fight as much more competitive. Much more competitive. Right? I feel just to win the fight. Golovkin has no greater, in my opinion, than let's say a 60% chance. Let's say it's 60-40 for Golovkin. Let me point out that Golovkin, by decision, I believe the odds drop even more. The bet I'm recommending is Gil to win the fight at plus 750, hedged with Golovkin by KO at minus 333. Right? I consider the minus 333 to be ridiculous. What the casino's telling you is that if these guys fought four times, Golovkin would win by KO more than three of the four. Understand, against hard-hitting opposition, better opposition than Golovkin has faced, Daniel Gill has never been knocked out. He has never been knocked out. If you dig deeper and if you look at an amateur fight between Golovkin and Lucien Boutte, it's here online on YouTube, you're going to notice that Golovkin in that fight had a problem with Boutte's lateral movement. He ends up knocking out Boutte later, right? But he has a problem with Boutte's lateral movement. I believe Golovkin is going to look slow and is going to have problems with Daniel Gill's lateral movement. I'm expecting Gill, who is above average defensively, who wasn't caught too much by Felix Sturm's jab, right? Sebastian Sylvester's jab, who held his own with Anthony Mundine. I'm expecting Gill to literally be hovering around Golovkin, and I'm expecting Golovkin to look sluggish. Right? On the telecast, I'm expecting the announcers to say, what's wrong with Janady Golovkin? Golovkin just can't get off. Golovkin is having an off night. I'm expecting Golovkin to look like he's having an off night. Just understand, it's going to be an off night caused by lateral movement. It's going to be an off night caused by design. The only question for me is whether Golovkin can land a bomb, right? He's blessed with outsized punching power. Whether Golovkin can land a bomb to take Giel out of his game, right? Golovkin's going to have to do so early because Giel is adaptive reactive, right? Giel is a tough customer. As I said, in my opinion, 
he is the hardest opponent, the most meaningful opponent Golovkin will have fought to date as a professional. I think this is a competitive fight because of the odds being offered. I like Gil to win the fight at plus 750, hedged with Golovkin by KO at minus 333. I want people to understand that hedge and understand the risk, right? If Golovkin wins the fight by decision, going 12 rounds for the first time in his professional career, you lose it all, right? Also understand, right, I don't want Tom, Dick, Harry, Shirley, and Keisha after this fight to contact me and say, ha ha, Dwyer, you're wrong if Golovkin wins by KO. If Golovkin wins by KO, I'll be wrong in the line to collect at the casino. Right? Golovkin by KO is part of the bet. The other part of the bet is Gil simply to win the fight. If the casino is offering you outsized odds on a mispriced fight, in my opinion, you have to take it. And I do believe Daniel Gil has at least a 40% chance of pulling the upset. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I've stayed away from some exotic betting plays here, over and unders and things like that. If there is a different bet that you believe the gamblers here online need to know about, share that information with us in the comment section to that video. Right, the idea is to get an upper hand on the market and the casino. I think this fight is badly mispriced. I think it's a competitive matchup. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.